So remember, rational number, it's spelled like this, rational number. No, notice that the word ratio is inside of the word, right? And so what ra rational number is, is can be written as fraction, right? Uh, fraction like this. And what about irrational? And these are numbers that cannot be written as a fraction. So let's give uh, a couple of examples of each of these guys, and then we'll solve a couple quick problems. Very simple concept, nothing hard here. All right, rational number. What about all the whole numbers that you know? The number four, the number three, and so on. Is the number four a rational number? All you have to do is say, can it be written as a fraction? Well, the whole number four can be written as four over one. That's a fraction. And any whole number that you know can be written as a fraction. 10 can be written as 10 over 1. 25 can be written as 25 over 1. So all the whole numbers that you know are all rational numbers. All right, what about some of these other numbers, like negative numbers? What about negative 2? Well, is this rational? All you have to do is say, can it be written as a fraction? You can write it as negative 2 over 1. So all the negative numbers, all the positive numbers, are all rational numbers. All right, what about the number 0? Is zero a rational or an irrational number? Well, zero can be written as, uh, uh, as lots of different things. You can write it as zero over two. Remember, zero divided by two, uh, zero divided by anything is zero. So I could write this as zero over two or zero over three or zero over seven or whatever, zero over anything. But anyway, these are all fractions. So zero is a rational number, all right? What about the number 1.25? Okay, it looks like this is not a, um, uh, 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 that maybe this is not a rational number, but it actually is. Because the number 1.25 can be written as 5 fourths. Because think about this uh, uh, number here, 5 fourths. If you put it as a mixed number, divided in, it goes 1 and 1 fourth time. So 1 with, a, uh, goes in 1 time with the remainder of 1, 5 minus 4 is 1, over 4. So 1 and a fourth is uh, like this. It turns out that, uh, any of the decimals that you know, uh, the decimals that you get in a calculator or just in calculations, they're almost always going to be rational. Either they're going to stop and, and, and the number, the decimals are going to stop like this 1.25, it stops. These can always be written as a fraction. And so they're all rational. All right. Of course, any of the actual fractions that you know, like two fifths can be written as a fraction because it is a fraction. So all the fractions you know are, are rational. So you can see so far we're where you're kind of thinking, what's left? Because I've told you all the positive whole numbers are all um, rational. All the negative whole numbers are all rational. Zero's rational, right? Uh, all the fractions that you know, one-fifth, two-sevenths, three-eighths, they're all rational. All the negative fractions, they're all rational too. And all the decimals that stop and don't go on and on for, uh, they, there's no, uh, they don't go on and on, they just truncate like this, they can always be written as a fraction too. So they're all rational as well. And what about, uh, you know, things like um, 0 0.3 with a repeating bar? This is 0 0.3333333333. Well, you might think that's not rational, but actually this uh, decimal can be written as one third, right? What about negative 0 0.6 with a uh, repeating bar over this? So this is like negative 0 0.6666666 like this. You can write this as negative two thirds. So some of these fractions, also, can uh, these, these decimals that go on and on forever can be written as fractions. And here's the rule of thumb. If the decimal stops, it can be written as a fraction. If the decimal goes on and on forever, but it has a repeating pattern to it, like 0.3333333, on and on forever, then it's rational. It can be written as a fraction. If there's any kind of pattern, right, in the decimals. Even if it's like 0 0.123, 123, 123, 123, 123, 123, there's a pattern it can be written as a fraction, right? So what are the numbers that are irrational? Then the only way that you can have those basically is if the decimals go on and on forever and there is no pattern to them. So again, 0 0.123, 123, 123, that is rational because there's a pattern. So let's give some examples of the um, some uh, numbers that are irrational. Well, the most famous one that you're all aware of the, the, the granddaddy of all of them is the number pi. Some people may have told you incorrectly that pi can be calculated as 22 divided by seven. Uh, and that's not true. 
So anybody ever told you that is wrong. It's, it's just not correct. It's a common misconception people have. You cannot find pi by 22 divided by seven. It's not true. Pi is a number that starts out with 3.14. That's what we use in our calculations, but actually goes on. 3.141592, and then it goes on and on forever. But there is no pattern to these decimals. In fact, people have used computers to calculate pi to millions of decimal places. And I mean literally millions of decimal places. And as far as we can tell, there is no pattern in the decimal digits of pi. They go on forever, but there is no pattern to them. And that means that this number pi cannot be written as a ratio of two whole numbers, a fraction that involves two whole numbers like this, okay? All right, what are some other irrational numbers? It turns out that the square root of the number two is also irrational. And if you put that in a calculator, you're gonna get 1.41 and then a bunch of digits after it that don't have any pattern to it that you can, that you can see. Uh, also, just another example, negative square root of seven. If you put that in a calculator, you're gonna find that there's a decimal, uh, a decimal, uh, you know, negative uh, decimal pattern to it, but there is no pattern. It goes on and on forever in your calculator window, but it, there is no pattern to it. So basically, the radicals that you know, the square roots that give you whole numbers, those are rational because they give you whole number answers. But all the other radicals that don't give you whole number answers, they're going to be irrational. If you take square root of three and put it in a calculator, then it's gonna give you a number, you know, one point and then some, some digits after it that do not repeat, there's no pattern to it. You know, we know the square root of four is two, but the square root of five is irrational, it goes on and on forever. The square root of six is irrational. We know the square root of nine is three, that's a perfect square but the square root of 10 is irrational. It goes on and on forever in the calculator window like this. So let's summarize. We have two main classes of numbers in math. We have the rational numbers and the irrational numbers. The rational numbers can be written as a fraction and the irrational numbers cannot. The irrational numbers are easier to talk about because there's really not that much to say. It's just a decimal that goes on and on forever with no pattern in the, in the numbers after the decimal point. And the number pi is the most famous of these irrational numbers. Any radical, uh, like a square root, that you, uh, that you calculate that isn't a perfect answer with a, with a whole number is going to be an irrational number as well. There are other numbers in math that are irrational. There's a famous number called e, which is 2.7 and a bunch of digits after it. And that number shows up uh, a lot in... Um, exponential growth, growth of money. It shows up everywhere, actually. It's, it's actually just as important as pi. You just don't learn about the number e until a little bit later in math. But it's just as, it's on equal footing with pi. e shows up everywhere. And it's a number that's 2.7, and then there's digits after it that goes on and on forever, but there are no pattern to those digits. You cannot write any of these numbers as a fraction. But all of these numbers can be written as fractions. The whole numbers can be written as fractions. The negative whole numbers can be written as fractions. Zero can be written as a fraction. Any decimal that just stops in its tracks can always be written as a fraction. The fractions that you know and love from fourth grade are all written as fractions. Any decimals that go on and on forever but have a pattern like any of these repeating decimals, you can write them as fractions as well. And even examples I gave you like 5.321321321. If there's a pattern, it can be written as a fraction. It is rational. Everything else, irrational. So let's start off by asking ourselves the following. Are the following numbers irrational or not? What about the number pi? Is it rational or irrational? We just told you it's an irrational number. So I'm gonna put over here irrational. And I don't even have this in my notes, but let's look at uh, three times pi. Is it irrational or rational? Well, if the number pi is irrational, if we take this number and multiply it by three, all of the decimals will be different, but there'll still be no pattern. It's also irrational. Right? All also irrational. Anything involving pi is always going to be irrational. What about the number six? Is it rational or irrational? Well, any of the whole numbers, I can write this as six over one. This is a rational number because I can write it as a fraction. What about the following, negative seven tenths? Well, it's already a fraction. It's negative, but that's okay. It's still a fraction. This is rational, All right? What about the square root of the number five? I said the square roots of the perfect squares, like square root of 16 to give you four. 
That, of course, is rational because four, the answer, is a whole number. But anything that's not a perfect square like that, square root of five, square root of six, square root of seven, square root of eight, they're all gonna give you decimals in the calculator that don't repeat. This obviously is not a perfect square, so it's gonna be irrational. Go ahead, grab a calculator and take the square root of five and see what you get. You'll see that it goes on and on forever. What about the number 2.68? This is a decimal. I don't know what the fraction is off the top of my head, but I know that it's a decimal that stops, all right? And so I know that this is rational. In fact, we can kind of, we can write it as a fraction right now. Think about it. When you divide by 100, you move the decimal, right? We can write this as 268 divided by 100. All that's going to do is take the decimal here and move it two spots to the left. So 2.68, we can write it as 268 over 100 because that's going to give us this. So this, of course, is a, fra is a, a fraction representation of this guy right here. What about the square root, let's look at uh, the number seven, the square root of 16, is this rational or irrational? Well, we know that this has got to be rational. How do we know that? Because if we try to calculate what the square root of 16 is, we already know the answer is four. Because four times four is 16 and four is a whole number. And so since these two things are equal, we know the answer has to be rational. And then finally, let's take a look at the square root of 40. Now you may not know what the square root of 40 is, but we can start thinking, right? Okay, so let's go up. Three times three is nine, that's not right. Four times four is 16, that's not right. Five times five is 25, that's getting closer, but it's not big enough. Six times six is 36, that's almost as big as that. Seven times seven, 49, that's too big. So we know that the answer to this thing cannot be six and it cannot be seven. It's gotta be somewhere between six and seven. And when you put that in a calculator, you're gonna find out that the, you'll get six point something and the digits will go on and on forever and they will not repeat. And so this is gonna be irrational. So when you get a radical, if you get a whole number, it's rational. Otherwise, it's basically always irrational like this. So the idea here is for us to understand a little bit more about radicals because we're gonna be using radicals a lot in the next few lessons. And so we have to do a, a kind of a, a global step back lesson here to talk about what a rational and an irrational number is. And basically, it goes as follows. Almost everything you know and work with in real life is rational. The whole numbers are rational, the negative whole numbers are rational, zero is rational, any decimal that stops is rational, any fraction is rational, any decimal that goes on forever with a pattern is rational, and everything else are just the weird oddball numbers, they're called irrational, pi is irrational, square root of two, square root of five, negative square root of seven, any square root that doesn't calculate to something nice is gonna be irrational. A special number E, which you'll learn about later, it is also irrational, and there are other irrational numbers too, but you get the idea. We don't have to list them all. Most numbers you interact with on a daily basis are, are rational. We're only learning about this now because we're using radicals, and I want you to know that the square root of seven is a decimal that goes on and on forever that doesn't repeat. It's irrational because we're going to be using a lot of radicals coming up. Follow me on after you solve all of these to the next lesson. We'll continue to practice your skills with rational and irrational numbers. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.